One of my favorite things that we do in our garden at our house is turn both the front yard and backyard into a giant pumpkin patch. We plant a handful of pumpkins in spring, usually around early June. They start pretty slowly, giving us plenty of time to enjoy all of the other plants in our garden and harvest things like our corn and beans. But then as the summer garden starts to die back, they explode into vigorous growth, sending out long vines and tendrils and climbing on anything that gets in their path. We do have to readjust them from time to time to make sure they don't pull down anything important like our blueberry plants or any trees and shrubs. But other than that, they're extremely hands off. And at the end of the season, we get to pull out a big pile of pumpkins. We do the same thing in our front yard where they cover the pachysandra that's the ground cover on our hill and we think make a really nice fall decoration. This variety is one that we call the Carolina Princess Pumpkin. It comes from seeds that I got from my mom, who got them from a farmer friend in North Carolina, and we've been growing it in our garden year after year after year and saving the seeds, so it's kind of become its own variety that does really well for us. We have family in town, so we got their help going on a scavenger hunt to find all the nice big pumpkins that we're ready to harvest. We harvest them when they are fully mature, but still mostly green. As long as the stem is nice and hard and the skin is toughening up, they will cure perfectly well indoors, where they're much less likely to be found and eaten by some enterprising rodent. We also do this whenever there is a hard freeze in the forecast, so we can bring in any pumpkins that wouldn't make it through that dip in temperatures and let them finish curing inside where it's nice and warm. We put them on our windowsills and mantle where we think they look great and eventually change from a deep green to a beautiful buff orange color. Once they change color like this and are fully cured, they will store for months, even up to a year or more, but we usually eat them long before that. In the winter time, most of our meals involve pumpkin in some way. We tend to go for more savory dishes, so putting them in things like stews and tacos or simply roasting them with spices to have on the side. But since we're not limiting ourselves to only homegrown or gathered food right now, I wanted to make something that I always associate with this time of year, pumpkin cranberry muffins. But first, a quick message from this video's sponsor, which is us. If you want to learn more about how to grow your own food, like these big old beautiful pumpkins, we actually have two comprehensive online courses that teach you exactly that. One of them is how to forage your own food, and the other is how to grow an amazing and productive garden. They have all kinds of detailed information on how to live and eat off the land, even if, like us, you don't own a big farm. You can buy them both as a package deal, so once you're done with this video, check out the link in the description where you'll also find a discount code. Okay, back to the muffins. My mom always made these muffins in the fall to send with us to school, and I loved the flavor combination of the rich, sweet pumpkins and the tart, bright cranberries.
I like to make the muffins with very little added sugar and then let people sweeten them to their liking with a drizzle of honey. We're lucky enough to have lots of honey right now, so we're enjoying the luxury of just really letting it flow freely when we want some sweetness. It's looking like a cold, gray, rainy weekend for us here in Pittsburgh, so it's the perfect time to bundle up with loved ones and enjoy some fresh baked muffins. I hope wherever you are, you have some cozy camaraderie too.